So metric prefixes are used to deal with very large or very small measurements. But there's a completely different way of dealing with very large and very small numbers that we're going to talk about in this unit. This completely different way is called scientific notation. I want you to think of it as a different way of writing very large and very small numbers. The truth is that you can use scientific notation to write any number, but it's usually only used when you have to write very large or very tiny numbers. And here's an introduction to scientific notation. First, I'm going to ask you a question. We're all familiar with the number 100, right? And hopefully you all know that the number 100 can be written as 10 times 10. That means that 10 is multiplied by itself two times. And that's just another way of saying the number 100. Mathematicians have, have a shorthand way of writing 10 multiplied by itself two times. They write the number 10 and then they add another number. In this case, the number 2 as a superscript to the right of the number 10. This is just mathematical shorthand for saying 10 multiplied by itself two times. And you can pronounce it, if you were talking to someone, you can pronounce it as 10 to the 2 or 10 to the second power. The second question, here's a second question. We're all familiar with the number 1,000, right? Well, many of you will know that another way of writing the number 1,000 is 10 times 10 times 10. That means 10 multiplied by itself three times. So mathematicians would write this as 10 with a superscript of 3 to the right of the number 10. And you might uh, pronounce it as 10 to the third power. So I want so hopefully you have that under your belt. We're, we're on our way to scientific notation. We're not quite there yet. But we're talking about relatively small numbers here, the number 100 and the number 1,000. Now I want to talk about a much larger number. This is the number 100 billion. Another way of writing 100 billion is 10 multiplied by itself 11 times. So mathematicians might write the number 100 billion not as the digit 1 followed by 11 zeros, but they might write it as 10 to the 11 power. When the numbers aren't that big, it's easy enough to write them out the way that we're accustomed to. But when the numbers get very large, like 100 billion, or even bigger, it's actually a pain to write the number, write out all of the digits of the number. So one of the reasons for writing numbers with these superscripts is that for very large numbers, it's actually easier on the hand to write them out using these superscripts. So this is the beginning of scientific notation. What I've just shown you isn't quite scientific notation, but it's close. We'll get there in a minute. I should point out that the picture here shows the richest man in the world. This is Carlos Slim. He's a Mexican real estate tycoon. <clears throat> and he currently has almost 10 to the 11 dollars. Here's a slightly more difficult problem. How do you write the number 600 billion? Well, 600 billion is just six sets of 100 billion, or six times 100 billion, right? As we just said, uh, 100 billion can be written as 10 to the 11 power. So a simpler way of writing 600 billion is to write 6 times 10 to the 11 power. Hopefully you'll agree that it's easier on the hand to write 6 times 10 to the 11 power than it is to write all of the digits using the more traditional method. This is scientific notation. When you write numbers in scientific notation, they will always have three parts. The first part is called a coefficient. Here the coefficient is 6. The second uh, part is the number 10. Sometimes people will call this the base number, and in scientific notation, it's always the number 10. The third number is the superscript, which is formally known as the exponent. So if we wanted to write the number 600 billion in scientific notation, we would write 6 times 10 to the 11 power. I want to circle back now to the number 100 billion. On the previous slide, we said that 100 billion could be written as 10 to the 11 power. And as I said, this wasn't quite scientific notation. The reason it's not quite scientific notation is because scientific notation has three parts, and this number only has two. This number, the way we have it written right now, uh, is missing the coefficient. So to write 100 billion using scientific notation, we simply multiply 10 to the 11 power by the number 1, because any number multiplied by, by the number 1 is just the original number again. So this is how you write 100 billion in scientific notation. Hopefully, you now have a sense that scientific notation was not simply invented to torment students. It was invented to make it easier to write very large and, as we will see, very tiny numbers.
I'm ultimately going to show you a recipe for how to write numbers in scientific notation on the next slide. But before we get to that recipe, I want to give you a slightly more difficult problem because I want you to first think about how we're actually manipulating the numbers to get scientific notation before I wind up giving you a recipe. So here's the slightly more difficult problem. How do you write the number 6,500 in scientific notation? Well, 6,500 is just 6.5 or 6.5 times the number 1,000. Uh, if that seems difficult, you can, check, you can check that that's accurate with a calculator. And we just said that the number 1,000 is just 10 times 10 times 10, which is also 10 to the third power. So 6,500 is really 6.5 times 10 to the third power. It's just a different way, or you can think of it as it's the scientific notation way of writing the number 6,500. <clears throat> Here's the recipe for writing numbers in scientific notation. If you follow it carefully, it will always work. In this case, our example, uh, in, the, in this example, we're working with the number 100,000. If you have a number and you want to write it in scientific notation, you start on the left side of the number. Move your pencil to the right until you find the first digit that's not a zero. So here, the first digit that's not a zero, in fact, the only digit that's not a zero is the digit one. And I've highlighted it in blue. Place your pencil to the right of the first digit that's not a zero and make a decimal point. So there's our decimal point. And this is going to be what I'm going to call your new decimal point. The next step is to find where the old decimal point is. In the case of this number, the old decimal point is not written down, but it is implied to be at the very end of the number. So I've just put it there. And now I'm going to mark this as, uh, I'm going to call this decimal point the old decimal point. The next step is to count the number of hops that it takes to get from the new decimal point to the old one. Here it takes five hops forward. And to write the number in scientific notation, we just said that you need a coefficient and an exponent. The coefficient in this case is going to be the old number, but with the new decimal point. So in this case, the coefficient is 1.00000 or more simply the coefficient is just the number one. The exponent is going to be the number of hops that it takes to get from the new decimal point to the old one. So for this number it took us five hops forward so the exponent is positive five or more simply just the number five. So to write the number 100,000 in scientific notation we would write one times ten to the fifth power and that's just a different way of writing the number 100,000 in the more conventional way. Here's a slightly more complicated example, or at least a slightly more detailed example. But the same recipe works for this, for this number as well. So here we're trying to convert the number 12,345 into scientific notation. So step one is to start on the left side of the number and move our pencil to the right until we hit a digit that's not a zero. Here the first digit that's not a zero, starting from the left, is the number one again. So I've highlighted the number one in blue. Now you place your pencil to the right of the digit, that, the first digit that's not a zero, and put a new decimal point there. So there's the new decimal point, and we're going to mark it as our new decimal point. So we should also next find where the old decimal point is. <clears throat> the old decimal point should be at the end of the number. It's not written there, but it's implied. So let's write down where the old decimal point is and mark the old decimal point. Now we count the number of hops that it takes to get from the new decimal point to the old one. In this case, it takes four hops forward. So that is going to be our exponent. Our exponent will be positive four because it takes four hops to go from the new decimal point to the old decimal point. And the coefficient for our number is going to be the original number, that is one, two, three, four, five, but with the new decimal point. So it will be 1.2345. And the exponent, as I said, will be positive four, or more simply, the number four. And so the other way, another way of writing the number 12,345 is to write it as 1.2345 times 10 to the 4. That's just the scientific notation way of writing the number 12,345.